Welcome to YouTube Excel Magic Trick, the beauty of Excel. Hey, in this little trick, we're going to see the beauty of Excel. If you want to follow along by downloading this workbook, click on my YouTube channel on my college website link, and you can download the workbook called The Beauty of Excel. Hey, in this little trick, we're going to see the beauty of Excel, and in particular, we'll see the guidelines for smart speed spreadsheet construction. Now here it is. The basic rule is, and the reason why spreadsheets were invented in the first place, is that you have formulas, a bunch of formulas. This is the income statement, some sales analysis, and a chart. All of this, all of these formulas in this chart are all based on these assumption numbers. So you put numbers that can change into a separate area in the spreadsheet. These are the inputs for the formulas and the charts. These are all inputs, and then all the formulas here, here, and in the chart are linked. So as soon as I change something here, it will update. Now let me just change this unit sold here to 6,000. You can see this changed a little bit. The color there changed. I know on YouTube you can't really see it, but um, we'll create it ourselves, and then you can uh, see it for yourself. Now let's change this uh, $30 sales price to 20 Watch how dramatically all these, these, and the chart will change. I'm going to hit Enter. Boom, instantly. That's why we do Excel. That's what makes Excel beauty. Beautiful. Now let's go over and click on this other Sheet Tab Sales Analysis. And we want to put our assumption numbers in and then build our formulas based on these assumptions. All right, so units sold. We're going to say we're going to sell 5,000 units. Again, you always keep your input numbers or assumptions with labels. Don't forget, smart spreadsheet construction, you label them. Why? Because when you come back tomorrow, let alone next week, you can hardly remember what these numbers mean. So we're going to have units sold uh, 5,000. The price for the unit for whatever the product is, we're going to sell 30 bucks. The variable cost, that means every time you make a new one, it's going to cost us $13.69 extra. The fixed costs, those are for all the equipment and everything, it's going to be $79,250. Now, over here in our sales analysis, we want a bunch of variable units so we can estimate sales for variable cost, sales, contribution margin, fixed cost. So we need to have this label here change in essence. And so we're going to, in this sheet, have in our assumption area, hey, what are our start units? Hey, we want to see what happens when we sell none. And the increment, meaning every time we jump up a notch, we're going to increase the increment by 1,000. Then we can see how the sales and variable costs change. So even labels in your table of formulas should be based on formulas also. We'll see how to do that in a second. I'm going to type 1,000. Now, we're going to go up here and build our income statement. Now, sales. What is the formula for sales? Equals the units sold times the price per unit. Enter. Now, variable cost. Oh, equals the units sold times, oh, yeah. Not the price, but the variable cost per unit. Enter. Contribution margin. That just says, hey, take all our sales and subtract all of our variable costs. Contribution margin means how much you have to cover your fixed costs. All right, fixed costs, what are they? Equals this. Enter. And now net income equals contribution margin minus the fixed cost. Boom. Oh, 2,300 bucks. Now, we got to do a little formatting here, too, because in accounting uh, and in uh, any kind of budgeting, you want to, it's hard to see where the calculation was made in this column of numbers. So I'm going to click in the contribution ma margin, because remember, we took this minus that. I'm going to control one, which is a keyboard shortcut for format cells. I'm going to go to border. And on the top here, I'm going to click. And notice this is in 2007, line, color, draw your lines. In t earlier versions, the line was over here, and the color was over here, and this was over here. Much more uh, logical to put it from left to right. So I'm going to click on this line and click on the top. Click OK. No way, that little line means, hey, we just did a calculation on the numbers above. Now I'm going to click down at net income, control one for keyboard shortcut for format cells. I'm going to click on this thick line here, the medium size line, click on the top, and then the double line. That means the bottom line. Click on the bottom. And then click OK. There it is. Uh, that means we did a calculation on the numbers above, these ones right here. And that double line means, hey, this is the bottom line. Now let's create this. 
um, we want to create a bunch of sales and variable costs at all the different units. So here, in this, we want our labels not to be, uh, you don't want to type in 0, 1,000, 2,000. Again, that violates the uh, beautiful rule of Excel. Any data that varies goes into the assumption area, the input area, and everything subsequently is based on those numbers built by a formula. All right, ready? The start numbers is equals. Click on that zero. I enter. And this next formula, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger here. It's going to be equals, hey, the one above plus, and I got to scroll down and get my uh, increments. So it's looking at that cell right here. But when I copy this down, I always want to look one above plus locked on B16. If these are both relative cell references, if I didn't lock this when I copied it down, this green one would move down. So I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of B16 and hit the F4 key. Not once, but twice. That dollar sign in front of the number means when I copy it down across the numbers, it's locked. I'm going to control enter and then I'm going to drag that down. I'm going to point to my fill handle with my angry rabbit and click and drag. And there we go. Click on the last one and hit F2. F2 puts it in edit mode. No way, look at that. The blue one is one above and the green one is locked on B16. All right, I'm going to click escape and I'm going to get busy. Uh, creating my uh, sales and variable costs. But wait a second. Look at this. I've typed in sales, variable costs, contribution margin, fixed costs, and net incomes. I would like all those words right across the top. Watch this. Here's a super cool trick. If you highlight all of them, one, two, three, four, five, there's five labels. These labels are bloop, vertical. These labels are, want to be bloop, horizontal. There's something called a transpose function. And if these five cells are the same as the five cells listed vertically, then you could say, highlight them all. And in the white cell, the very first one, type equals transpose. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Equals transpose. No way, there's a transpose function. And it's an array. Equals transpose. And then all you do is you scroll over and you get like that. So far, it says equals transpose. You put a closed parenthesis. Now, remember, we've highlighted the five cells. So in order for this to be a proper array function and formula, we need to hold Control and Shift and then tap Enter. No way, they're all there. Now, if we were to change this to uh, revenue, I hope I spelled it right, revenue. Oh, look at that changes there. That is so clever. Now, let's do our formulas for uh, revenue, variable cost, contribution, margin, et cetera. I'm going to click in this cell revenue. And for revenue, we're going to say equals ah the units along this uh, column of numbers, which are actually row headers here. I'm going to say 1 to my left times, oh, and I have to go down and get the price. The price is that 30. Now, watch this. That B12, I wonder if I can blow that up. I can't blow that up equals this times B12. That B12, I'm going to verify. Yeah, it's looking at the 30 right there. Now, it needs to be locked going down, because I want this blue one to always look at the units, but this green one to be locked on B12. So since I'm going down across the rows, I'm going to hit F4, F4 once and twice. That dollar sign means locked across the rows. I'm going to Control Enter and then point to my fill handle and double click and send it down. I don't believe it even after doing this for years and years and years. I always go to the last one to verify and hit F2, F2. There it is. It's looking at that one to my left, and it's still locked on the price. That is simply amazing. I'm going to click Escape. Now, we need to do the same thing for variable costs. You ready? Equals two cells to my left, the units, times, and I'm going to get my variable cost, that 1369, B13. But we need to lock it. We're going down across the row, so I'm going to hit F4, F4. That puts the dollar sign in front of the row reference, so that B13 is locked. I'm going to Control Enter, and then double click my fill handle with my ang rabbit and send it down. I'm going to go down to one of the last ones and hit, actually, I do one of the ones in the middle, too, F2. No way, it worked. It's two to my left times the green one, B13 locked. Escape. Now let's do contribution margin equals all the revenue minus the variable cost. Hey, guess what? That's a relative cell reference. Two to my left minus one to my left. I'm going to Control-Enter, 
double click and send that down. Hey, when we come back for part two, we'll see you.